What's up everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and I am excited today. I am excited because, as you already know, Apple is making the transition from Intel processors to its own silicon in the Mac lineup. And so far, we've seen the Apple dev kit released with the A12Z Bionic processor and some early benchmarks leaked out. And the thing with those early benchmarks is that those benchmarks were actually running in emulation, in Rosetta 2, so they weren't natively running uh, on Mac OS taking advantage of all the power those processors have to offer. And now we've got some new benchmarks to share. We have now some new benchmarks that were kind of uh, leaked, revealed, released that show Geekbench 5 running natively on Apple Silicon in Mac OS. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, uh, that huge jump in performance from running an emulation versus running natively and how much power Apple's actually packing in those chips. But before we do that, we kind of want to take a step back and look at Apple's processors in general and look at how those A12 or the A-series uh, processors compare to Intel chips and the Mac line. So how the iPhones kind of compare to the Mac line and then what this new dev kit benchmarks are and how those kind of compare and what it's all going to mean. So let's go ahead and just dive into this whole thing, starting off with the A10 Fusion processor. So the A10 Fusion is a quad-core processor that debuted with the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. It ran at 2.3 GHz and scored a 740 and 1322 in the Geekbench single and multi-core scores. It compares best to the early 2016 12-inch MacBook, which had a Core M7 1.3 GHz dual-core processor, and that Mac got a 652 and a 1405. Then Apple released the A10X Fusion which was a six core design and debuted with a sixth generation 10.2 inch iPad, 10.5 inch iPad Pro, and second gen 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It earned a 831 and a 2265 when it was running on those iPad Pros. And that most compares similarly to the 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro with a mid-range Intel Core i5. And that Mac scored an 850 versus a 1972. So very similar in that single core and slightly underperforming in that multi-core. It's crazy because it's actually more expensive, but it performs slower in that multi-core test specifically. Then Apple released the A11 Bionic processor, which debuted with the iPhone 8, the 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. It again was a six core processor, and it was the first chip that Apple released to include the neural engine. On the iPhone 10, it scored a 917 and a 2350 on that single core and multi-core test, which was closest to the 2020 MacBook Air with an Intel Core i3 1.1 GHz dual-core processor. That MacBook Air averaged a 1076 and a 2842. Following that was the A12 Bionic processor, which first appeared with the 10s, 10s Max, and 10R in 2018. It was a 6-core, 2.5 GHz chip, and it scored an 1112 and a 2869 on that iPad Air, which was running that same chip. That's similar to the 2017 21.5-inch iMac with a 3 GHz Intel Core i5. That iMac got a 1005 and a 3208. That brings us to Apple's A13 Bionic processor, which is running in Apple's latest phones, such as the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's a 2.66 gigahertz six core chip. It averages a 1325 and a 3382 on the single and multi-core test, which is most comparable to the 13 inch Pro with eighth gen Intel quad core Core i5 8257U chip, which is a 1.4 gigahertz chip and it scored a 1012 and a 3676. Which finally brings us to the A12X and A12Z Bionic processors. These are eight core chips that are released in the iPad Pros. And even though there are two different processors, they're essentially the same one with just different bins. So the A12Z Bionic processors had a little bit better graphics capability, but they pretty much score the same on the benchmarks. And that A12Z Bionic processor is the same one that is included in Apple's dev kit. So how did it do on the iPad in terms of benchmarks? Well, it scored at around an 1115 and a 4626 on the single and multi-core test, which is most comparable to a mid-range 16-inch MacBook Pro with 10th gen Intel Core i7 processor. That MacBook Pro benchmarked around a 1024 in the single core and around a 5385 in the multi-core. 
But I think what we're gonna find most interesting is how the A12Z Bionic processor runs on Mac OS and how that Mac OS performs running on that Apple Silicon. So our initial benchmarks that we saw with that Apple dev kit that were running in emulation and not natively, that was getting an 845 and a 2960 in a single and multi-core test. But natively in the dev kit, it was getting a 1005 and a 4555. Those scores are almost on par with what it was receiving on those iPad Pros, which is pretty incredible. So there was a huge jump in performance on that dev kit running on Apple Silicon and Mac OS, going from emulation software to actually running natively. And that's with Apple not even trying. That is Apple just taking a processor it already had lying around, staking it into a Mac, making a few tweaks and seeing what it could get out of it. So imagine what's gonna happen when Apple actually tries on the Mac and is developing a Mac first processor instead of just, you know, taking one of the silicon it is using from an iPad and putting it into a Mac. So really focusing on the Mac and trying for better performance is gonna yield some great results. Of course, these raw benchmarks are not always indicative of real life performance. It matters just on what you are doing and how that lines up with what the benchmarks are actually doing. So it, it's not 100% just going to be a kind of, you know, one for one comparison, but it is a good example of how these chips perform in a standardized test across platforms. And even comparing the A12Z to the 16-inch MacBook Pro shows that Intel still has an advantage, but it shows that Apple is really catching up. Apple has done a great job with these chips and we cannot wait to see what Apple is going to do in the future. It sounds like Apple is going to be starting off with maybe a 13-inch MacBook Pro and a new MacBook Air as its first Apple Silicon-based Macs. But it is easy to see down the line something like the Mac Pro running on Apple Silicon and clearly beating out uh, competitors' processors. Apple has developed these things fast. They are able to iterate year over year over year while Intel continues to get plagued by delays for all of its latest chips. So this is a good example of what Apple's done so far and we cannot wait to see what is coming down the pipeline. What do you guys think of Apple's new silicon-based Macs? Let us know down below in comments or over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you want to grab a Mac for yourself right now, even though the uh, silicon ones are coming down the line, Intel ones are still here and we have some great deals lined up for you guys. Check out the links down below in the description. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.